Hey y'all, it's Tajla again. Welcome back to my channel and Happy New Year, y'all. This is the first video of 2022 and I am coming like, you know, any other video to encourage y'all, but this is really an encouragement for those who are actually feeling discouraged. So the title of this video, Jesus is still doing miracles. And that's because some of us are in a place where right now, whatever our circumstance and our situation, honestly, you, you probably be like, it would take a miracle. And people say that as if that means it's not going to happen. But the truth is, Jesus is still doing miracles. If, so if it would take a miracle, do you believe in miracles? That means it can be done and it will be done. You just have to continue to have faith. And so I'm about to share a passage where I can hopefully encourage you to continue to have faith and to have that hope and to believe in what you've been uh, journeying with God on. So we're taking this from John chapter 21. And I actually was inspired to share this because I had recently visited my friend's church where the, the speaker there spoke on this and I saw so many things pop out of this passage that I never saw before. So I'm gonna share it with y'all. Um, John chapter 21, verse one through 14 is what I'm looking at. And it's Jesus in the miraculous catch of fish. So. Go ahead and pause if you need to go get your Bibles because we really going to sit on this and kind of dig into some of these verses. OK. All right. So when you all ready and y'all got your notes, y'all got your Bible. Basically, where we're at now is Jesus has already been crucified and he's risen again. But the disciples don't know that he's come back yet. Right. They just know. OK, they crucified him. He's dead. They buried him. So, verse 1 of chapter 21 in John says, Afterwards, Jesus appeared again to his disciples by the Sea of Galilee. And it happened this way. So, I'm going to tell you how it happened. So, basically, Simon, Th Thomas, Nathaniel, and two other disciples were together. Peter says, I'm going out to fish, right? So, they're in a group together. I'm about to go out to fish. And they say, um, you know, we'll go with you. So they go with him. They all go out to fish. So what we have right here is they have a mission. They have set out to do something. They have an intent to do something. If they're going out to fish, right? They have a mission. They have a goal. Obviously, they have an expected outcome as well. If I'm going out to fish, what I expect to get? Fish, right? So they're going out to fish. They have an intent, a mission on what they're going to do, what they're going to set out to do, what they're seeking out. And they also have an expectation that should follow or come from what they set out to do. But it says they went out and got into the boat, but that night they caught nothing. And so I just want to take a moment to sit on that because what happens when we set out to do something we have a mission. We have a goal. We have an intent. You know, many of us, New Year, 2020, 2022, 2022 goals, that's where we at right now, right? Some of our goals have rolled over from 2021, and that's, some of y'all are the ones that I'm talking to, that's your situation right now, is this 2022 goal is actually a rollover from last year because I already set out last year. I already had a mission. I already had an intent. I already had a goal. I, had, I already had a, de a desire. And nothing came of it. I had an expectation and nothing came of it. So what do you do when you have the mission, the goal, the desire, and intent? You put in the work. You know how they say faith without works is dead? You put in the work. You apply works to your faith into the vision that God has shown you. And yet nothing. What do you do? How does that feel? Because I'm pretty sure it's discouraging. At this point, you're probably like, you know what? I don't even want no more fish. <laughs> Just had a fish. I don't. We set out for fish. We ain't find none. It is what it is. So what did they do? So they caught nothing that night, right? Continuing on in the passage, it says, early in the morning, Jesus stood on the shore, but the disciples did not realize that it was Jesus. So now Jesus is coming into the picture, right? Now Jesus has shown up. He's on the shore, but they don't recognize it's him. He calls out to them 
And he says, friends, haven't you caught any fish? Haven't you any fish? He asked him, did y'all get some fish? And my thing is, here's my thing with some of the things that the Lord be asking us. Just like Adam and Eve, right? When he asked Adam and Eve, who's asking them where they was in the garden. Okay, God, you already know. So here's Jesus asking if they caught any fish. You already know. Why are you asking me? Why are you asking me if it happened already? You already know. Why are you asking me if I got the job? You already know. Why are you asking me if they accepted me? If they, why, why are you asking me if I found, what, why are you asking me, Jesus, if it happened? And you already know the answer to it. For what reason? So anyways, they tell them no. But mind you, well, we'll get there. They tell them no, right? So haven't you any fish? They say no. And this is where I want to get with that question because Jesus, why are you asking me something you already know the answer to? And really what it is is, or might it be that he wants to see, how do I say this? I want to, I want to say it just how he said it to me. Here it is. Okay. So he's asking them if they caught any fish and we be in similar situations. Why are you asking me questions that you already know the answer to? And so might it be that he wants to see what will your response be when he tells you to try it again? You've been fishing all night, caught nothing. You've been praying all night, nothing happened. You've been hoping and having faith all year, nothing. You've been fighting, you've been battling, you've been nothing. Same situation. No, re no reward. Nothing has come of it. But I'm gonna ask you. I'm gonna ask you what's come of it. You gonna tell me nothing, but that's because I want to know what's go what's gonna be your response when I tell you to go ahead and try it again, do it again, still have faith, still stay in this process. What is going to be your response when I tell you to try again? I know you ain't caught no fish. I know it hasn't happened yet. I know you didn't find anything yet. I know nothing has come of it yet. But I want you to try again, right? So he tells them, throw your net on the right side of the boat and you will find some fish. So now this time he's giving them an instruction, right? And it's a specific instruction. When he gives us instruction, it's usually specific. And we have to be careful to follow the specific instruction, exactly how he told us to do it. So he gives them specific instruction and he also gives them a promise with it this time. So he don't just tell them to do it, but he says, do it. And, and you will actually get what it is you have set out to get. You actually, it's actually, you're going to get it this time. It's going to happen this time. This is going to be the one. This is going to be, do it again, do it this way. And it's going to happen. So he gave specific instruction and he gave a promise with it. All right. Now, when he tells us that most of us, when he tells us to try again, because most of our response, most of our responses will be to let him know that we tried all night. Like, no, we ain't got no fish, but we actually been trying all night. No, I didn't. I didn't land no job, but I actually been applying all over the place. No, I didn't. You know, I haven't. Whatever it is that you're set out to do or to whatever it is. Most of us will let them know, no, I've tried that already. I actually did that. We've been, we've been doing it for a long time. We'll be tempted to give him our no right before the blessing happens. And that's why this is my encouragement to y'all is to keep faith to be able to try it again. Will you stay faithful enough to try again? Will you be hopeful enough even when it looks like a hopeless situation? Will you be able to stay disciplined? to continue doing something that's beginning to feel pointless and purposeless. Because in the beginning, like I said, you had a mission, you had a goal, it was a point to it. I'm not setting out to, out to fish if I ain't expecting to get no fish. So obviously there's a purpose. When you set out for this thing, when you began, when you first um, placed your faith on this thing or had this desire for this thing, you had pur you felt it had purpose. There was a reason, there was a point. But now it's feeling like no point. It's pointless, it's purposeless, so why try again? 
but he wants to know, will you remain disciplined? Will you remain disciplined to continue to meet with him every single day, to continue to pray every single day, to continue to worship him, to continue to read your Bible, even when it's feeling purposeless and pointless? I, I, I met with you today, Lord. I prayed today. Nothing happened. I read my Bible. I still don't have no clarity on what you're saying to me. I still don't know what you're saying to me. Will you remain disciplined even when it begins to feel pointless? And purposeless because I'm gonna tell you the truth even when it feels like that oh trust me there's always still a purpose and a point the the very reason why you have not caught that fish yet is a part of the purpose the reason why he didn't give it to you at first is a part of the purpose the reason why you didn't find it right now is a part of the purpose this whole process is a part of his purpose. Think about when he had Moses to go tell Pharaoh to release the Israelites. And he literally told Moses, I'm going to harden Pharaoh's heart, but I still want you to go and tell him to release them. So, uh, Jesus, God, what, what's the point? <laughs> if you harden his heart, he's going to tell me, no, what, why, you, why are you giving me this instruction? Some of y'all already know the answer to that. Because this is going to build your faith. This is going to build your trust in him. This is going to work some things out in your character. You know, the pruning, the process and the preparation that he take us through before he give us some things that we've been wanting before we actually come into the blessing of the miracle. This part of it. Not catching any fish, that's a part of the process. Feels purposeless and pointless, but it has so much purpose. And you'll know in the end of it, right? You don't know now, so it don't feel good, but you'll know at the end of it. And so let's go, let's continue on, right? Because most of us will be tempted to say no right before the blessing happens. And there's actually two things that I want to bring attention to that I didn't see prior to recently. And that's what I'm gonna share right now. So first, it says that they fished all night. This is verse three, I believe. Yeah, Peter says, I'm going out to fish, so we'll go with you. And so they went out and got into the boat, but that night they caught nothing. That night they caught nothing. See, when I read this other times, I'm thinking, okay, they was fishing, they caught nothing, Jesus showed up, and then boom, blessing, right? But pay attention to the time of day, because when did Jesus actually show up? I'm wondering how long did y'all wait? How long was the wait? That night, that night they caught nothing. But the next verse says, early in the morning, Jesus stood on the shore. Jesus wasn't there until the next day. He wasn't there to give them any instruction until the next day. The blessing didn't happen until the next day. The miracle did not happen until the next day. And so, so some of y'all, my first encouragement and instruction for y'all is to wait just one more day. Now, that's not me telling y'all it's going to happen tomorrow or it's going to take one day. That's just me telling y'all every single day, have faith enough to wait one more day. Have faith enough to wait in the night until the morning because Jesus just might be standing on the shore tomorrow morning. Jesus might just be coming with the instruction tomorrow morning. He might just be coming with the blessing tomorrow morning. The miracle just might happen tomorrow morning. I need you to wait one more day. I need you to wait it out one more day. And when tomorrow comes, I'm going to tell you the same thing. Wait one more day. Take it a day at a time and you listen and you wait on that instruction. If you have not gotten the instruction yet and you feel like, okay, God, I don't know what to do next. I've tried, I've, you know, I've put in the work, I've done things. I'm at a standstill. We caught nothing. We fished everywhere and we caught nothing. So I'm just waiting, but I'm not just waiting without expectation. I'm just not waiting without hope. I'm waiting and I know that eventually you're going to show up with instruction. So I'm actually listening and expecting instruction and it's coming. So I'm listening for that instruction. Some of y'all already got an instruction. And this is the this is the part that blew my mind a little bit. Okay, this is 
the second thing that I noticed that I didn't know at first, that I noticed recently. When Jesus was standing on the shore, right? It says Jesus stood on the shore, but the disciples did not realize that it was Jesus. Many times when I've read this, I focused on the fact that Jesus came and gave them instruction. And so, you know, looking at the instruction he gave them, I'm like, okay, he gave them specific instruction. When the Lord gives you instruction, make sure you, you listen for the specific, like the specificities of it. You know, the, the, the particular parts within that instruction. Make sure you do it exactly how he tells you to do it. But according to this passage, they didn't even know it was Jesus. So that means the instruction that they listened to, they didn't even know it was from him. And this part blow my mind. And let me tell you why. Because I'm personally someone where I'm like, you know, okay, I ain't doing nothing until I know Jesus is the one that's said to do. I, I, I will get an instruction. And I'm like, okay, well, I need, I, first I need to know that this is from Jesus. First I need to know that this is him. I need, okay, Lord, can you confirm that this is you? I'm, I'm waiting for all kinds of confirmations that it's him before I follow a simple instruction. Which is typically what we would do. You don't want to just be following instructions that ain't from him. But what happens when we are a little uncertain? I haven't recognized that this is actually you or not. What do we do? And I want to compare this to another passage where the same thing, the same miracle happened, right? About the fishing. They couldn't find anything. Jesus showed up, told them what to do. And at this, this time, this was before Jesus' death, right? So this was when he actually first called Peter and them to come with him and to make disciples. This is when he first met with them. So they were fishing, were unable to catch anything, and then he told them to put their net out in, into deep waters, right? This was in Luke 5. In verse 5 of that chapter, Peter says, Master, we've been, basically, we've been fishing all night and we've caught nothing. But he says, this is what he says. I'm, I'm actually going to say it exactly how Peter said. Master, we've worked hard. You, you've been putting in the work. We worked hard all night and haven't caught anything. But because you say so, because you say so, I will let down the nets. So at that time, they knew it was Jesus. And that's the only reason why they're like, hey, look, we've been trying and we about gave up. But because you say so, I'm, I don't know if I'm expecting much or hoping for much. I'm feeling real discouraged and I'm just gave up on the outcome, but I'm just doing it because you said so. Right. But they knew it was him. That was an easier one. Right. If I know it's Jesus telling me, of course, I'm going to go ahead and do it, even if I'm feeling like I um, don't we're going to see, but I'm still going to go ahead and do it because Jesus told me to do it. And he obviously telling me for a reason. But what about when you're not sure? Like in this passage in John, they were not they did not realize that that was Jesus standing on the shore. So whoever gave them that instruction, they don't even know who that is. They just know that they received an instruction. And I point that out because there will be times where we are not sure. And we're like, OK, uh, Jesus, this is you. And then we stand still in paralysis. Now we do nothing because we so caught up on if it's him or not. And really we get caught up on that because we don't want to get it wrong. We don't want to make a mistake. And that's really not what it's about. I'm not sure, but this is the instruction that I get got. And so in faith, I'm going to follow this instruction. And that that's really what it's all about. God is pleased by your faith. Hebrews 11 something, somewhere in there in Hebrews, it says it is impossible to please God. Without faith, it is impossible to please, please God. He is pleased by your faith. We be thinking, okay, if I do it, I got I, I to I do it right. It got to be right. And now we, we paralyzed by this aim to be perfect and get it perfect every single time. And the truth is you're not going to get it right every single time. But let me tell you how you're going to learn to know and to hear the voice of God is by following it in faith. So what you do is I hear an instruction. I'm going to follow it. Let go of the, how do I say this? We, we need to let go of 
what the outcome could be. Because even if it was, even if it is him and we follow it and the outcome ain't looking too much how we expected it, then we sitting there, well, I don't know if there was a... Follow the instruction. Follow the instruction. And that's how you learn, okay, that, that was God. Or that wasn't God. I'm going to know next time that was not him. But I'm pretty sure those of you who are listening, you, you knowing in your heart, if I'm talking to you, that the instruction that you've gotten, that you've been trying to figure out, is this him or not? That it's, it's an instruction that you should probably go ahead and follow. I'm going to encourage you to follow it. That's how you're going to better learn his voice and to trust him is by applying your faith. You literally just have to follow the instruction in faith and be okay. Be okay to get it wrong. And I'm not saying get it wrong on purpose. If you already know it's an instruction that you're getting that is wrong, do not do it. That's not doing it in faith. That's doing it in the opposite of faith. If you have an instruction, it's not against the word of God and you feel like, okay, I'm not sure but I'm, I'm going to do this in faith. Go ahead and do it. And so I actually want to, I guess, go into how do you know if you should follow the voice or not. I'm encouraging you all to go ahead and follow it. But let me make a, a distinguish two different voices or, or two different kind of feelings you'll get in your spirit if you know you should go ahead and do proceed or not proceed. Because there's a particular type a person or people that I'm talking to on this video um, and so I'll share actually something that happened the other day I was on my way home what should have been a 30 minute drive turned into an hour and 30 within a second because an accident happened and so all of a sudden the navigation changed to now this drive it's not going to be 30 minutes but it's going to be an hour and 30 right and that's most of our situation right now we set out the fish it should have been simple I thought we was going to get it on the first let down of our nets and here we is all night and still caught nothing why is this taking longer than i anticipated right so i'm on in my car driving what should be a 30 minute drive it turns into an hour and 30 while i'm in the car all of a sudden whole bunch of traffic cars are going nowhere seeing all red lights and brake lights and i'm just like dang now i gotta sit here on this freeway sitting so what happens is while we're sitting there i notice so okay so you know how you're driving i hope y'all can picture this with me you're driving right and you're passing on ramps uh onto the freeway i was sitting right there where there was an on ramp a longer on, on ramp so i wasn't on the ramp i was already on the freeway but next to me were the ramp for cars coming onto the freeway now what was happening was there were no cars coming up that ramp to get on this freeway. However, the cars that were already on the freeway with me, they was getting over into that lane and going backwards down the on ramp. They were going in rever reverse out of the freeway, right? Automatically, my mind, I'm like, I said, Lord, people be doing stuff when they impatient, okay? So this is warning number one. If you're feeling a sense of impatience and like, oh, I got it. I'm probably not talking to you on this video. You should probably not proceed with what you're about to do to prevent what danger, unlawfulness, because <laughs> this is illegal what they was doing. It was illegal. It was dangerous. Um, and it probably, it probably was actually more of a waste of time. I'm not even sure if they actually made it out of the freeway. Suddenly there was a surge of cars that later started coming up the ramp. I feel like all of those cars that reversed off the ramp had to end up come back on and find themselves in the same space so stay the course so you'll know i'm talking so i'm not talking to you if that thing that you're feeling like you need if you're feeling desperation if you're feeling desperation like i need to do something okay no i need to do it needs to happen now and if you're feeling desperation i'm not talking to you on this video i would move cautiously when considering that thing you feel like you should do okay i'm not talking to you if you're feeling desperation in your situation because you're not at the point where you're exhausted and tried everything you're still being controlled by the outcome or whatever it is you're trying to do i'm not talking to you i'm not talking about desperation but if you feel more so in a place of i'm actually just feeling very still and in a place of discipline i'm feeling 
as if what I'm about to do is about to be in faith and a decision made in self-control. Meaning I know very, very well that I would be needing to intentionally decide this versus I'm feeling pressured and I just got to do something and I have to try this. No, I feel a leading to go ahead and do this. I've been feeling a nudge. I've been feeling like I had enough time to actually weigh what it is I've been instructed to do that I'm not certain if it's him or not. I've, if you're in that space where it's like, I actually, I'm not really feeling anxious about it no more. I'm not feeling like I want to control the outcome. I'm actually feeling more discouraged, but I still have some hope, hope enough to listen to another instruction, to try it again, to put my net out again. Though, yeah, I'm talking to y'all. So if you're feeling desperation, anxiety, lack of control, pressure, I'm not talking to you. If you're feeling impatience, I'm not talking to you. If you're feeling more still and you just feel like I've been waiting for instruction and maybe I have an instruction, but I've just been waiting to see if it was him, I'm, probably, I'm talking to you. You need to really consider that instruction that you heard. It might be Jesus. Um, so I use that example to compare because what they were doing were moving, they was moving out of impatience and they was actually backing out of their process. So we're on the road to get to, we're on the freeway to get to where we want to go. These people are backing out, looking for shortcuts, <laughs> operating out of impatience. What they were doing was dangerous. What they were doing was unlawful. If it's all of them things, it's not Jesus. Okay. But for the rest of us who are staying the course, and that's why this video is about staying faithful, staying encouraged, staying hopeful, even when it's looking like a hopeless situation, even when it's taking longer than it needed to, to have faith enough to stay the course and put your net out again, to try again, to stay in the process. I'm talking to y'all. Stay, whatever it is, if you've been doing something already and the instruction is to do it again, to try it again, I'm talking to you. Do it again. Stay the course. Stay doing what you have been doing. Just do it again because you never know which one it is. Do it again. But the opposite of instruction, which would be to just back out or find a shortcut, that is not the instruction from Jesus. That is not the instruction. That is not the instruction I'm giving y'all on this video. Because if you feel like I'm speaking to you, that's not the instruction. The instruction is to stay the course. And so anyways, it's takes a lot of patience to stay the course because it's frustrating that a 30 minute drive is taking an hour and 30. It's frustrating that we've been fishing all night and we ain't even caught one, right? But as I stayed on this course, it was it was a fine ride for me cuz I, you know, it was no way to get out other than the unlawful way <laughs> or the dangerous way. And then at the end, yeah, so I'm like, okay, well, let's just, I'm going to enjoy my gospel music while I'm sitting in this car. Eventually, as we're riding, it, we get on this narrow road where it's just one line of cars riding. And I'm far away on the hill, it's dark now at this point. When I started driving, it was like, y'all know how, how the sun be working. It's dark now. And so I can see far away on a hill across a little representation that I'm following the right course that yes, this is the way that he's told me to go. This is the way he's led me in and I stayed the course and I'm reminded, okay, stay in this because he's in this. Stay in this because he's in this. And here's my little encouragement, my little reminder that he actually is. And so that's how that night played out. But I'll use that example to make the distinct, to distinguish between who I'm talking to when I say follow that instruction you hear that you're not sure it's from God because I don't want to I don't want anyone to go and do something completely dangerous or that's completely not of God but again if you do it's all a faith walk you will learn afterwards <laughs> you will learn and that you then you will be more clear on his voice so don't don't be afraid of getting it wrong but I just want to give that a little bit of a heads up but what you know as long as it's in faith as long as it's in faith, go ahead and he, he'll just, he'll let you know. So anyways, most of y'all know the end of the story. The end of the story is the actual miracle. But I really wanted to focus on the stuff leading up to the miracle. Because that's the place many of us are in right now. And we just need to keep our faith that he's still doing miracles. So anyways, when he tells them to put their net out again, what happens is 
you know, they suddenly they brought in a large number of fish, right? That's the miracle. First there was no fish, now there's a large number of fish, and they were large fish, right? So what he when he finally did it, it blew, God's always gonna blow us, blow our mind, right? Exceedingly oh, yeah. gonna do exceedingly abundantly above anything that we ask or think, right? According to the spirit at work within us. So according to his Holy Spirit, that that's why somehow supernaturally you have been able to have the patience, to have the faith in the midst of the fact that this has not happened yet and it's taken much longer than it should have been happen, happening or that you anticipated. You, you're going to be all right. Y'all going to stay the course. I just already know. And I'm waiting on the testimonies. I'm waiting. So when it happens, y'all come back to this video or just let me know somewhere. Instagram, YouTube, whatever. But so let me so y'all know how it ends there's a lot of fish all of a sudden a huge miracle right and then one last part that I want to finish and wrap this up with is the fact that when they when the miracle happened so remember they didn't know it was Jesus on the shore they just heard an instruction and they followed it right but after the miracle happened John says it is the Lord. So now they they real like this is Jesus. That's what they after the miracle they realize this is Jesus. And that's how it's going to be for you when the miracle happens. You're going to and that's why I say follow that instruction in faith and don't be so caught up on if it's going to be wrong or right. Just follow it and you will know afterwards if it was him or not. You will know in the same way that all of a sudden that they know. And you will know by how he does it because again he does exceedingly abundantly and more above more above all that we can actually think it, it's going to blow your mind uh, it's a, the only way it would be jesus because it's such a because it's a miracle you're going to know right so that's when they realized who it was and then it also says in verse what is it so when they, they realized it was him and then they went over to the shore to him, right? And while they were eating, so fast forward a little bit, they were eating with eating the fish with him, enjoying the miracle, enjoying the blessing with him. He invited them to enjoy the blessing with them. He said, come and have breakfast, right? It says, none of the disciples dared ask him, who are you? They knew it was the Lord. You're going to know it's him. Some of y'all who have not experienced God in this way, you're going to know it's him. Some of y'all who have not experienced him yet, like you're like, I hear people talk about him. I hear people talk about Jesus and have these testimonies, but I never experienced anything with him. You about to have an experience where you're going to know it's him. And so that's why this process and this journey is not pointless and purposeless. It's happening this way because when he does it, you and everyone else will know it's him. You're not going to be able to deny it. Okay, so I thought that was the last part, but that wasn't the last part. There's actually something else pretty quick and small that I wanted to share. It's the fact that when they went over to the shore, so Jesus told them, put down their net on the right side. They do it. They get a whole bunch of fish, you know, yay. And then they realize it's the Lord. So then they run it over to him on the shore. My thing is when they landed, so when they got to the shore, they saw a fire of burning coals there with fish on it and some bread. When I read this, I said, Jesus, you had the, the, you came and gave them instruction to put their net out again for some fishing. Meanwhile, the whole time you already had fish. They, you could have just showed up and told them, hey, come over here. I got some fish over here. Enjoy this fish. But you made them put their net out again after all night fishing and catching nothing at this point they discouraged they don't want to try again you coming to tell them to try again while meanwhile you already have fish waiting you already have fish that they could eat and it goes back to why would jesus be doing this if he already know the job that he had lined up for you if he already know the wife that he was gonna have you to find if he already know the husband that he was preparing for you if he already know the blessing that he had for you if he already knew where the money was if he already knew who you need if he already knew if it was already there why you had me going through the process <laughs> right why he had them let their net down again when he already had fish that they could eat because it has 
it really has nothing to do with the end goal or with the with what you get it has everything to do with your obedience the building of your faith the building and the pruning of your character the processing you the preparing you it has everything to do with discipline Every, everything to do with keeping hope stay in the course despite how it looks despite how long it takes despite how purposeless it feels it has everything to do with that what will be your response when he tells you to try again ignore the fact that he already knows how it's going to end ignore the fact that he already has for you that blessing ignore the fact that he already knows i'm about to do a miracle and they, they ain't even ready for what's about to come they ain't even they can't even imagine what i'm about to do it, despite the fact that he already has it knows when it's gonna show up knows how it's gonna happen who gonna be involved it, he know all that he got all the fish on the coal already that you could just right now be partaking in but yet he got you over here in the water still fishing still going through a journey still going through a process and that's because with anything in life with anything here on this earth it's not about the end goals of jobs or relationships or the money it's not about those things it's about this whole journey it's about the journey and the processing and in the whole midst of the journey and the processing that's the part that's going to continue to let you know and remind you who God is that he is Lord. It's not about the things that he's about to give you. It's about the journey and the process that's about to let you know who he is. And so that's the whole point and that's the whole purpose. So stay encouraged. Those are my main things for y'all. To That main thing, Jesus is still doing miracles. So expect a miracle, but you got to keep faith. I need you to be able to wait another day. I need you to be listening for instruction and I need you to have faith enough to follow that instruction. And at the end of it, you will know that he is God. Oh, at the name of Jesus, oh, oh, oh. I me. So I thank y'all for listening to um, this video, watching this video, however you're listening or watching, whatever. Go ahead and share it with someone who's on your heart as you was listening to this. If you were someone watching this and you've already experienced God moving this way, go ahead and share in the comments a testimony when he did something similar to what we just read in this passage. Just to encourage people to let him let people know that God is still doing miracles. He does do he does he God is a miracle worker, okay? Go ahead and drop your testimony down in the comments to encourage people. Um, and yeah, if you're new to my channel, subscribe. Again, like the video down below and I'll see you guys in my next video.